So you just got given a glucometer to test your blood sugar. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a glucometer, when you should use a glucometer, and how often you should be using your glucometer to test your blood sugar. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give you a free gift to help you record your readings of your blood sugar. If you're a type 2 diabetic looking to reverse your condition naturally, then Type Rhino is the channel for you. Give us a subscribe, give us a like and press that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos that we bring out every Monday 6.30 GMT time. My name is John Collett and why am I qualified to talk about this? Well, in March 2018, I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and I managed to reverse my condition in six months. And I want to show you how you can do the same. Okay, so what you're going to need for this next bit is your glucometer, your lancet device, obviously the needle that goes in, testing strips, and a bit of cotton wool. Now, my first suggestion for you is to always wash your hands with soap or antiseptic wipe because we want to get rid of any excess germs that might be on your fingers before we prick your fingers to take the blood test. The other thing it does is it warms up the fingers and it's a lot less painful when you've got warm fingers so please use warm water. The next thing we want to do is we want to load up the load up the lancet okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take the the needle twist that end off and put it in there alternatively the safer way would be just to place that in there and then twist it off which is what i actually recommend you do <laughs> okay so then what you want to do is you're going to load the device so you're going to pull this back and this locks the needle into position and then place the protective cover back on the top. At the bottom, you should have a number which you can alter, and this will determine the amount the needle pops out into your finger. So I suggest you only use it deep enough so that it will actually penetrate. You don't want to do it more than once um, if you can avoid it, because it, every time you use it, you nullify it. Null then, you make the needle blunt and you want to avoid that as much as possible. So now that that's loaded back, what we're going to do to be able to take the blood test, we're going to press this button here and this is going to shoot that needle out and into your finger. Now I advise you use the side of the finger. Okay. If you use the front of the finger here, you've got a lot of sensitive sections here. So penetrating the finger there will hurt a lot more. Doing it on the side, we won't hurt as much, okay? So press reasonably hard, yeah? And then press the white button so that it then goes in to the side of your finger. And as you can see there now, if I push, the blood begins to come out. Not for the squeamish, I appreciate. So what I wanna do with the first one, I'm gonna get the cotton wool, wipe that first lot of blood off. Make sure we only use clean blood when we take the test and then give it a squeeze so the blood comes out again. We're then going to get the testing strip and place it into the glucometer. Now my glucometer turns on when I put the testing strip in. So as you can see now it's come on and it's telling me to take the test. So I place the strip up against the blood and what it does is soaks that blood up and then it starts to take a reading. It only takes a couple of seconds and it'll come up. And you can see mine comes up 5.9 mmol, which is really good. So now I want to show you how to take the needle out safely. So remove protective cover over the top. Then put the head of your needle there and place the needle into there now you'll probably find that that clicks back down so put your finger on the top press the white button it moves up 
this bottom bit here now if you push this up as you can see it pulls the needle right up and when you pull it out it comes out safe comes out safely in the protective cover which you can then put in a sharp spin okay so how, how often should you test your blood glucose and when should you test your blood glucose well the doctors would like you to test your blood glucose six times a day just before you eat and ideally two hours after you eat now there's two reasons for this first of all it's going to give them an accurate record of how your body is reacting to different foods so that they can med give you the right level of medication. There are, it is also going to allow you to learn how your body reacts to different foods. So hopefully it'll encourage you to eat less sugary food and educate you on what food has got what sugar in and how that affects your body. Now I've got a challenge here. I've got to be honest with you because if you go in if you go and test your blood sugar six times a day you're probably going to get quite sore fingers and if that doesn't bother you then that's fine and do it six times a day but if you want to go down to three times a day then that's also fine and I would recommend that you do it two hours after you've eaten food so that you can get those benefits that I mentioned earlier now I'm going to be completely upfront with you I probably did it only once a day and I did it first thing in the morning. And the reason for that, that, that for that is, is because I, you know, I just didn't, didn't enjoy the pain on my fingers. I gotta be honest, I'm gonna be, I you're completely I'm gonna man up and tell you exactly what it was. Um, but it just took me longer to get the data together for the doctor to give me an accurate medication, accurate reading. Now, you need to keep a note of this. So here's your free gift. What I've done, I've designed a spreadsheet, which I record, I record all my blood levels on. And if you click on a link in the description box and stick your name and your email address in, I'll send you a copy of that spreadsheet completely free. I'm also gonna send you a chart on how to convert your MM all readings, which comes up here, or your MGDL, depending on where you're from reading and how to convert that over to a1c now if you're new to this whole diabetes thing you're thinking to yourself what is mmol what is mgdl what is a1c i'm going to put another video here about what that means and then i'm going to put another video here on how you can reduce your a1c quickly you're not a number you're a rhino now charge